British Museum's new exhibition is devoted to the 19th century Japanese artist and printmaker we know as Hokusai. His most famous image, called in the West the Great Wave, is familiar the world over. It's made in a type of woodblock printing known as ukiyo-e. Hokusai lived to be 89 and his work ranged across painting, printmaking and much else. By the 1830s, when he created The Great Wave, he was experimenting with European perspective in his compositions. Meanwhile, in Europe, his work became part of the craze for Japanese imagery that swept through the West in the second half of the 19th century, so we see artistic influences flowing both ways. Before that, Japan had been a closed country. On its opening to Western merchants and travelers, the thrilling new qualities of Japanese colour and composition, design and realism affected all sorts of arts in the West, from fashion and theatre, furniture to gardening. Van Gogh and Gauguin, in their yellow house at Arles, ordered the newly available Japanese prints from Paris and pasted them over their walls. Even in Vincent's anguished, bandaged self-portrait, a Japanese image is visible in the background. The flattened perspective and vibrant tones of the new ways of seeing were a profound part of their rebellion against the stifling rules of the Salon. In Manet's 1868 portrait of Emile Zola, we can see that any image of the sophisticated intellectual was incomplete without a full set dressing of Japonisme, as it was called. Monet's water lily garden boasted a Japanese bridge, which he painted tirelessly. Cézanne's beloved Mont Saint-Victoire recalls nothing so much as Mount Fuji. And as for the clothes, from Monet's early portrait of his wife Camille, to Mary Cassatt's woman with a letter, or the flattened graphic lines of her woman bathing a baby, the kimonos, colours and fans proved irresistible. Even up to pictures of the 1920s screen sensation Louise Brooks. It was not just about an imitation of a Japanese look. Here you can see how Degas' compositions were deeply influenced in his use of cut-off figures, asymmetric shapes, strong diagonals and empty spaces. And we can see the influence move right on into recent art history. The influence of ukiyo-e stretches right into manga, comics and pop art. And to see how all this began, the British Museum's rich exhibition provides a perfect guide.